Yo, this hot, this the spot, there it is, pod.com. We're interviewing the best comedians, so tune in quick and get your ears receiving them. We talking about life and life to stream right to you from the microphone right to your home, dude. Side note, this might get embarrassing, but no, don't sweat, yo, cause there it is. Welcome to the There It Is Podcast, the comedy podcast to help you find your inspiration. I'm your host, Jason Farr. Let's do this. Thanks so much for joining me here on this podcast awards losing podcast. There it is. But we're still very thankful to have been nominated for the podcast awards. And you can see our acceptance speeches on our Instagram. We have a post up there. It'll be the one before... This one that you will see with the beautiful Emily C. Browning. That's who we're talking to today. And I'm so thankful that she joined us here. But I do want to push you over to our Instagram. At There It Is Pod. So you can see our acceptance speeches that did not air because we did not win. (laughs) But I am very thankful for all of you for listening. And everyone who nominated us and voted for us. And... I just want to make sure people find out that we are thankful through the form of an acceptance speech that never aired on the podcast awards, because again, we did not win. Should have won, because let me tell you, best black hosted podcast, the one that won, has a black host and a white host, and he was talking during the acceptance speech, and let me just tell you. That's not the time. It's literally not the time for you to talk. (laughs) I'm joking. He didn't say much, but he said anything at all. I mean, the gall of white men. Okay, I'm kidding. I'm having a good time because this is a comedy podcast where we talk to a musician. As I mentioned, New Zealand musician Emily C. Browning has returned to the podcast to chat about all the stuff that she's had going on since she was last on. So let's just get right to it. Here's my chat with Emily C. Browning. It's been just over four years exactly because you were on in August of 2017. So you've been Holy doing moly. so much. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't seem like a lot when you say four years. I mean, I feel like if I had a... I'm not good with like four or five year plans at all, but if I had a four year plan, I think I'd be, I'd, I'd have achieved a lot more. <laughs> what? Oh, that's funny. But... Cause like, I, I look at it as you've done a ton since then. Oh, well, thanks. It's always different from the inside versus from the outside. I do appreciate that. It's very nice. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm looking at the stuff you've put out. You've put out a, mm-hmm. a single in 2018. You put out an EP in 2019. And uh, also, you put out her songs with a collective. That that's was another true. thing you did, did in that. 2018. Yeah. I did. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> here that, I am. That was Dissing like on you... myself and not putting out enough. And then here we go. The, the whole catalog comes out slowly and surely. And I remember it. I go, oh, yeah, okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. She did that. It's nice. Yeah, cool. they had a nice following, right? It was a collective of female artists from around the world. And you all wrote and recorded an EP in a week. Yeah. Yeah. We did it. We did it twice, actually. So the first time 2018 was in Los Angeles and that was really fun. And that was just a week. And we had that time to kind of get four songs together and a music video. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It was all go. And then the, the next year we did it all again and we did it in Toronto, Canada. And we upped the stakes a little bit. It spent a little bit more time and uh, made eight songs and a music video and did a live show. And then then we all kind of just passed out at the end. Yeah. (laughs) It was a lot. It was super fun, though. So cool. Such a cool... um, such a cool project and it's something I'm really proud of and I hope that we're able to do it again soon it would be cool to like because a lot of the girls are from London so it'd be great to do Mm -hmm. a London her songs maybe next year be great you got a lot of spins on Spotify her songs song goodbye has over a million 1.5 million listens I know that anger's a stepping stone to peace of mind Stuck here so long How can goodbye be seen? How is an ending pain-free? 
Yeah, she's carrying the team. That track, she's doing. She's doing good. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool. It seems to all be coming back to you now that you've done all this stuff, um, <laughs> because this year you put out a single and a music video. Tell the mood that can drop like a bucket of rocks now. Yeah. before but this one was very produced so it was uh, maybe yeah. was it a was it a bigger production this this new one i wasn't into you anyway yeah that track you've done your research well done that, that's really nice uh, that that song was um that was really fun to make the music side of it i i produced it and recorded it all myself and then i new zealand has this thing where it's kind of an arts funding program and I applied for it's called new music single and you can apply to get some funding to make like a high quality song and a music video mm -hmm. um and that's what I did and I, I think I've applied many times throughout the years and it's, it's actually quite hard to to get into but that one song managed to kind of make it through and so yeah so I had a bit more of a budget and I could I've got a, a videographer friend who's really good at that kind of really clean crisp Hyper produced kind of look, and I was really keen to get him on board. His name's Caleb Wayati, but he goes by Clow Mount on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was really cool. Got a really small crew together, and then the rest of the funding sort of went on a bit of like Facebook and Instagram advertising and a PR campaign and and all sorts. And it's just it's just really interesting watching how quickly the budget just kind of dissipates. With it, it costs a lot to release a song, and especially when you've got a music video and you've got a promotional campaign, it's yeah. a, this the costs stack up really quickly. Yeah, but yeah, it was so much fun, and I'm so grateful to have that kind of assistance. It's a little bit like Canada. I think Canada has similar programs for Canadian artists. It's like just as a country, I think we're just we're so keen to just make sure that every year we have an output of really high quality stuff, including music videos, because we all know how expensive it can be to make. And it's right. like it's a little bit out of reach for a lot of New Zealanders to actually like get together the money, especially when, you know, Spotify doesn't pay that much for streams and you really have to crack a couple million to actually like <laughs> pays a bill so oh, really? <laughs> yeah I mean de depending on which country you are and I think a million streams can be a, a couple of thousand dollars but uh, I mean that's not really a minimum wage when you spend it out over no, maybe no. It, it might take a year to crack a million or you know it's so it's right. really interesting that the financial side of music is a whole you really have to be quite interested in business to, <laughs> and and, and right. self-promoted business to um yeah, a lot of it's not actually sitting down making music. It's actually like crunching the numbers and doing all that. So, yeah, I'm really grateful for the New Zealand government to have such an, an interest in supporting smaller artists to make sure that there are quality music videos coming out of New Zealand because I suppose it's kind of a given that America will always have their top 100, like, hit smashes, huge budget. It's like mm -hmm. they've always got that churning out where we don't really have that that kind of industry here. So, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I didn't think about the difference of how releasing would be there. And I I mean, it's pretty famous, the little amount that artists can get from streaming services. And they've, mm -hmm. I mean, these streaming services have been criticized a lot for that because it has to hurt record sales. And mm -hmm. who's getting the money for these listen? It's not yeah. going to the artists uh, that much. And it's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. It is, but at the end of the day, you have to evolve with technology, and you have to you have to be open to the the changes in the industry. I, like I, I know a lot of people who who sort of ref, refuse to get a Spotify account and are really like supportive of like buying vinyl and CDs at people's shows and stuff. And that's really awesome. It's really cool to have people who are just genuinely really supportive. But at the same time, that's not really the future of music. Vinyl sales, possibly yes, is the future of music because it's so nostalgic. I think. Mm -hmm. um, 
from just a general listenability, Spotify is really great for, for, right. for the listener. Right. It's not so great for the artist at the moment, but for the listener, it's really working. And I love like just having access to just endless music on, as, a, as a listener myself. So, I mean, it's good to roll with the punches, but also fight with fight for <laughs> a living wage, I think. But yeah, it's, it's also a bit about quantity as well. I think even the CEO of Spotify was saying uh, recently that it, it, it's very cheeky of him and it got a lot of he got a lot of harsh criticism for saying this but he said artists it's no longer viable to release an album every two years because it's not going to be financially viable especially if you're not signed to a label um i i think that's true but it's also a bit it's also a bit like screw you man yeah <laughs> you're a billionaire <laughs> get out right. of town <laughs> oh so he was <laughs> saying see you release it wasn't an album financially <laughs> viable for him that artist no 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 it. he's saying it's financially viable for the artist so he's he's basically telling musicians to pull themselves up by the bootstraps and release more music so uh, that um yeah because everybody so can Prince make a living puts out an album a year yeah every, everybody like has a really high easy. output <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah we are in an era with the industry where the artist can really take a lot of control and that's great and there are a lot of avenues and opportunities for them to find an audience. And that's great. But mm. it's also a mixed bag when they're not getting a living wage from all these places that are getting a lot of money off of the backs of artists. Like mm -hmm. the CEO from Spotify. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> these guys yeah. are doing so great. And mm -hmm. yet they're, you know... It's not, it's, it's harder for the artist uh, to, mm. to make something from, from their music on these sites. It's harder for the artist, mm. and that's unfortunate. Yes. However, the, the, the other side of it is that we no longer need record labels anymore to make music. I don't right. need to be on a record label to sit in my home. But like Everything is so accessible these days to make music on a right. laptop with nothing but a, a, a $50 interface and an mm -hmm. XLR cable. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and that's why it's so in your control, which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So it's definitely, a ch as we all know, it's a changing market and you just have to roll with the punches. And I think I'm just trying my best to do that. And I, and I know that I, I need to, I think, up my quantity game a little bit. I've released one song this year and I'm working on another song, which has also been, uh, funded again so I've got a new music video coming out which is really exciting oh, but I need to cool. kind of up that output a little bit I think and that's that's all part of it and I'm happy to just kind of roll with it yeah and you also did a song was it last year with Corey Wong you did something with him Yeah, that was last year or the year before. Yeah, probably 2019. So at the start of 2019, he took me on a tour, like a 23-date tour over East East USA and Midwest. Oh, cool. um, yeah, and then at the end of the tour, we had a couple of days to chill in Minneapolis, and he lives in uh, Minneapolis. And, yeah, he, he said, come over and we'll just – I've got this track – um, Antoine Stanley's thrown down a kind of rough vocal with with no lyrics. You know how like singers do. You 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 throw down a a rough track in there. It's just kind of mumbly, kind of <laughs> no words, but like it, some kind of melody. And it, it, what he'd done it was really cool. And, and Corey was like, "Well, my album is actually due soon. I've got a due date on it. So if you if you have any cool ideas, let's get let's crack this out in a couple of days." So I, I did. I sat in my Airbnb and I. I was like, holy moly, I can't stuff this up. This is Corey Wong. This is the full big sound. I'm going to do something cool. Mm -hmm. I think I put a little too much pressure on myself, but it was super fun. Corey was so great about it. And we, we co-wrote the lyrics, basically. I came to him with the set of lyrics that I'd worked on, and he said, well, how about we edit this and change that? What do you think of this? And he helped me a bit with the melody, which I accidentally wrote it a little bit out of my range. So it was a bit too hard for me to sing, but we got, mm. we got there in the end. But it's a really fun song. 
and he's obviously released it on on one of his albums and that's actually done quite well on spotify as well so it's exciting that's very yeah. cool well good for you and you know you've done all this stuff and yet you were saying earlier go oh, i would hope i'd accomplish a little more so where do you think that sort of mindset comes from because you are doing things is it just that you aren't <laughs> keeping tabs of it necessarily or or what I mean, you're right. I, I, I am doing a lot. I think where I start to get in my head a little bit is the just the pure output of recorded tracks to Spotify. I think possibly even just under my own name. I mean, I, I love I love the her song stuff. I love the Corey Wong stuff. And I'm always keen to like collaborate with cool artists and do all sorts of stuff. But I think I really need a, a really good solid base of music of my own like even just having a a solid album is just a really good piece of it's like a body of work that you can say this is what I've done so far and I I, I've actually managed a project from start to finish because it's just project managing this whole thing like music is just a series of projects that you've got to actually finish and release and Mm -hmm. let go of so I think I'll be really proud of myself when I have an album that I've finished and let go of the perfectionism of it and said, right, it's time to just throw this out. That's, I think, the, the next step or the next goal. Even not just, not an album, possibly even an EP would be cool too. Just yeah. have a, something that I can like sign and stamp it and send it away. Yeah, so that's, instead of me saying, you know, I'm so down about not having released enough stuff, it's more, it's more that that's just my next goal, which is like, it's, it's more of a positive thing rather than me being <laughs> down on myself as a right. product, productivity um, machine. But also I think it's, it's obviously, you know, capitalism and we're all kind of brainwashed to think that we have to deep be doing a million things at once to yeah. like deserve our place in society. So yeah, it's just battling with that. But as I say, it's a good thing. It's a positive thing to have goals and things to look forward to. It certainly is. And also, you know, in regards to what we were talking about with Spotify, if somebody was putting out something every year, I mean, I guess that, I don't know that guy's background. I don't know if he ever worked at a record label, but I do know that there was a time that some record label execs didn't think people should put stuff out a lot because they didn't want to oversaturate the market with that artist or with exactly. the artists on their label. And so there is <laughs> And I think that still stands. That. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want to overexpose yourself or or give mm-hmm. your fans so much that it's almost too hard for them to latch on to anything. Yeah, for sure. It's, it sounds as if, I don't know the background of this, the CEO of Spotify either. I mean, I'm really not, uh, I'm not going to assume anything, but it, it is a little bit of a tone deaf thing to say, mm-hmm. um, especially for someone who's, who is making a lot of money off, off other people doing that. Yeah, I mean, it is. certainly <laughs> helps him to, for people to be putting a bunch of content out all the time. But it, you know, Absolutely. that wouldn't necessarily help the artist. Um, <laughs> but it's all, it is like a weird thing because... For some people, it might work well if they put out a bunch of stuff Mm. because who knows what's going to hit, you know, who knows what's going to get a lot of attention. And that one thing that hits can bring a bunch of attention to older things, which can help lift all the chips. But, you know, Mm -hmm. who? that's one of the weird things about entertainment. (laughs) And it's always been is that you just don't know what's going to do super well. Uh, yeah, exactly. And musicians end up being quite superstitious <laughs> about, oh, if I, you know, release something at, at, at 7 a.m. on a Tuesday, because that worked well last time. <laughs> it's like <laughs> a little superstitious ritual that starts to emerge with things like that, because you never know what's going to hit and what's going to. Oh, I did this last time and I got on a huge Spotify playlist where that, that might not be the case for the next thing. But yeah, yeah it's, it's fine. It's just the game you have to play and, yep. and it's okay. Re-industry has their little little quirks. So, yeah. <laughs> For sure. So what have you learned since we last spoke? I mean, it's been four years. What do you feel you have been able to learn? That's such a huge question. Uh, yeah, I think back in 2017, I was, I was pretty excited about going to the U.S. and playing some shows and it was kind of when the Instagram thing sort of just started to hit 
Mm -hmm. end of 2016 early 2017 where I think the algorithm was sort of at its peak and treating me really well and then I was sort of gaining a lot of followers which has slowed down a lot now Uh, that that's totally fine though at the time it was great because I was like oh great cool all these people in America are interested in my music I really want to go out there and play and so I did that and it was really hard and uh, at times it was quite I, I felt quite by myself and it's quite difficult being independent like that but I think I'm really glad that I did that and got out and played a lot of shows and it was a little bit hard because I'd only had that one track that was out at least I had sort of something but now I'm a little less focused on live performance and a little more focused on learning how to produce and just upping my skills in the last four years I've learned so much technical stuff like not just you know singing and playing guitar and music and all that but um learning how to use photoshop like for gig posters and and artwork and things and learning how to use final cut to make stupid youtube videos but also little promotional teasers for new music and also learning how to produce on ableton um or logic a lot of skills have been acquired in the last four years and i'm so immensely proud of that so I'm focusing a little less on trying to get out in front of people's faces and, and force them to like my music <laughs> and, and instead trying to trying to show, not tell, trying not to shout about how good my music is, but actually be like, here's a lot of music that you can listen to and decide for yourself. <laughs> but, I, but I am also very grateful for having the opportunity to do that. I met so many cool people in America and obviously did her songs and um it was just absolutely like life-changing to have that experience over three or four years and now I think it's just an evolution of actually I don't I don't think I need to do that so much now but I do need to really knuckle down and um have a lot of material ready for people to enjoy or not enjoy on Spotify and and hopefully have some really good quality music videos and maybe an album and yeah really just focus on the the project management side of things very cool and speaking of letting stuff go wasn't it you that posted something saying that you finally let go as a guitar player trying to impress John Mayer (laughs) <laughs> i did <laughs> yeah yeah what what was that it's no longer it my intention to try and impress john Mayer. <laughs> yeah 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 like an I, instagram post yeah I we're learning to let go <laughs> <laughs> yeah learning to let go I, and i said yeah i'm learning to let go trying to impress him with my comedy online <laughs> I, I've, I've let it go yeah he's he's a dry dry humor dude yeah. yeah it's like like I, I grew up listening to John Mayer and um, I think I, I, I do think he is amazing but also I, I know that it was because I had a lack of like female idols to look up to there were not a lot of feminine shredding guitar players when I was going through high school I, yeah. actually I think they did exist they just no one no one well, um, promoted I, them as much as they promoted that's them true there, I so. think Orianti was maybe the only one <laughs> I heard about literally the only one I'd ever heard about because of Michael Jackson. She played it. Um, she'd played for, uh, for him for a while. It. Yeah. And it was yeah, but even then, it was yeah. like she she has a very specific style. I respect her playing, but I don't I don't love that style of music. So it's not yeah, only it's that, like but like kind of... having options of of I feel like on the other side of things, if you would like to look up to a male guitar player, you've got a mm-hmm. billion to choose from and you can really hone in on the style that you like. But yeah, just yeah. having one or two just wasn't wasn't so good. So That's true, th- yeah. I didn't know that I believe it's the song I'm a Bitch by Meredith Brooks. I'm a bitch, I'm a lover, I'm a child, I'm a mother. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. That is just the name of the song. I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah, um, yeah. That's okay. But I believe <laughs> Meredith Brooks plays the guitar solo on that, and it wasn't until like a year ago that I found that out. And like I heard that song, but they aren't making a big deal. They're not zooming in on her, right? Playing the guitar. Oh, is on. that I'm a bitch? Yeah. I'm a love. Oh, classic hit. <laughs> she's a good soloist, you know. Like she's a good, she's a solid mm-hmm. guitar player. Apparently, there might be mm-hmm. some like problematic things that she said more recently but 
I am to understand that she's a good guitar player, but that at the time I didn't hear that at all. I didn't hear anyone point that neither. out at all. No, neither. And uh yeah, and then there's Bonnie Ray. Bonnie Ray's a solid guitar player, but I mean there are others mm-hmm. as you said, but for whatever strange reason that wasn't the highlight. Even for Bonnie Raitt, I knew she was a good guitar player, and there were people mentioning mm-hmm. it, but people would downplay it and just focus on her vocals. Mm. Yeah, it's a, that's, that's a bit of a, a, a thing, and you're, you're totally right. I think women are, are sort of um, get sort of put into a bit of a box of they're the singer-songwriter, they're the emotional ones, they're the ones that... that have that show their uh, emotion and empathy and feelings through their uh, deep and meaningful songwriting, mm-hmm. but not often do they get praised for their technical ability. So I think technical ability is usually, and I'm being very careful with my words here, is tends to be seen as a masculine trait. And I think I think men and women can can have strong masculine and feminine traits within them. So I, I think it's pretty unfair to assume that women sort of have these should have these empathetic deep, like deep and, and and mothering and caring traits that are solely just that rather than having actual technical ability and learning how to do things that are really specific or like guitar solos and things and it's just such a such a weird such a weird thing to dive into it's super interesting but yeah I won't go too deep on it because <laughs> I'll just get mad <laughs> no I understand I mean it is frustrating even just to hear about it and it's not happening to me Directly. It's all changing now, though. It is, and I'm Definitely. so glad. Yeah, I'm really excited for the next generation of musicians to come out because I think even like TikTok, I see a lot of femme presenting female players who are getting technical and playing awesome stuff. Like not not just like you know the Orianthi kind of shredding solo thing, right, but actually right. lot, like really cool, well thought out. Sorry, I don't mean to assume that Orianthi is not you know that's not what I'm saying, uh, but um. <laughs> like really emotional playing where every note has a lot of feeling and I think Mm -hmm. I'm so excited for young girls to actually see themselves represented in that way on TikTok in a place that's so accessible to find oh yeah I mean I on Instagram I follow just as many femme presenting or or female players as I do males and uh, if not more honestly um, (laughs) yeah it's cool huh yeah, and I, I mean that's and it's that is one of the beauties of social media because we are exposed to so much more now, and when it's something mm-hmm. that's good and inspiring, then that's that's a great thing. And I am glad mm. that things are changing, and it's because of that exposure that I think things are exactly. changing. Exactly. Yeah, slow progress, but we're doing it. Yeah, I think one person that I would really love to hear you play with, and not it's for no other reason than I think your voices would blend together, is Mary Spender. Out across the water, you chose to live alone. But I heard you back on land. Ah, cool. Yeah, she's cool. She I is. like her a lot. Yeah. I knew about you first. And so when I found out about her and I thought, oh yeah, she's got a really cool voice like Emily C. Browning. And so I, <laughs> <should we> say? <laughs> I've been, uh, that's been the dream is to have a collab, to hear a collab between you two. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one day. I think she works really hard. I really like admire her. She did. She's not afraid to like, like I was saying before about learning different programs and, and, and she just goes out and does it. Like she's really good at, her youtube stuff and she's also like a good songwriter she's a great guitar player and she's like not afraid to like get out and just be technical about shit <laughs> it's cool <laughs> yeah she's really great she's so incredible and really cool so i i hope i hope that collab happens the last time i wanted a collab <laughs> or for two people to play together it happened it was john Mayer and d'angelo what the fuck's up Uh, did you I manifest met, that into the I world? I wonder if I manifested that and if I did, <laughs> allow me to manifest you and Mary Spender 
playing together. Right. I would love that. <laughs> I think we'll we'll put that out into the world and just um, wait for the universe yeah. to connect the dots yeah. for us, and 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 you'll have your 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 moment of I did that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and I won't take any money for it. Okay, it's all, it's all for you. <laughs> so kind of you. My goodness. <laughs> I won't be the Spotify CEO about this. Idea. <laughs> yeah. Well, great news. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> What's next for you? We do have this pandemic. I don't know if you're in a place where you can tour. You mentioned some music that you're working on, but what else are you hoping to get out of this next season of your life? Yeah, not so much not so much touring. I think this is I think the pandemic has just been a cool opportunity to 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 stop uh, focusing so much on live music and actually like go inwards and be like what can I learn while just at home. And I mean it wasn't it hasn't actually been so so bad in New Zealand uh, we've been able to kind of move around still without the presence of cases around mm. been really lucky for that but I actually really enjoyed lockdown <laughs> I say that I say that very cautiously because I, I know I know lockdown wasn't wasn't great for a lot of people so I do appreciate that moving forward I'd really like to just I've got a handful of songs that have all sort of three quarter finished mm-hmm. really like to just like wrap them up get them mixed and masters um slap on a, a, a an album artwork or EP artwork and just keep moving on that way and learning how to just be a proficient producer has been so much fun I've really enjoyed digging into Ableton but yeah the next release is a track called Andy so I wrote uh, a while ago and I, I I have actually toured with it and played it live and I've got some really good feedback from just those live shows. And people say, well, when is Andy coming out? Well, I really like Andy. He's so cool. So that was really nice. And the music video, uh, we've, we've just started filming that uh, the other day, actually. It, it involved a lot of underwater uh, filming, which was very fun, <laughs> very um, a lot more challenging than I, than I, than I expected because, uh, you know, when you take a big breath, and you see how long you can hold your breath underwater. You, you sort of put your face under and then your whole body just kind of floats to the top because your lungs are full of air. So mm-hmm. I had to figure out how to weigh myself down with some um, like Velcro ankle weights. <laughs> so I could actually take a big breath of water, hold my breath and uh, dive under and film some stuff because otherwise wow. I'd be like, well, just float straight to the top. So um, <laughs> that was a bit of a challenge. And also like finding out how to get the lighting right and even uh, gaining access to a pool that was deep enough to film because most pools are just kind of like shoulder, yeah. shoulder height or head height. So that was so much fun. It was really, really hard to get that all happening. Wow. Yeah. How long could you stay underwater? Oh, surprisingly not long because I, I tested m- myself to see how long I would last. And I think I got up to like a minute or something holding my breath. But that was just wow. me kind of just sitting around being stationary. But when you're filming, it's like you have to move around and you've got actions to do and you've got to like be thinking. And it's it's actually quite stressful. I think as soon as you're underwater, your your body kind of kicks into that kind of panic mode a little bit and being like, why are we doing this? I don't like it under here. I would rather be on the surface right now. So we'd only get like... 15 to 20 seconds of footage at any one given time it was pretty hard on the um, videographer he did so well he could hold his breath for so long I was really impressed but really? I just kept having to go up for for air so but I think what he'll do in in post is he'll he'll slow everything down so that right. he's got a lot more time to work with and I think it would look really cool in slow motion anyway so yeah uh, sure. yeah I'm really excited to see how it turns out all I can really do is um I trust his 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 editing skills and his videography skills like a lot. So I think it's going to be really good. But at this point, it's so out of my hands. It's just been I've I, I have no control over how it's going to look from here on out. So which is pretty cool. It's a little bit more of that letting go thing. <laughs> how do you come up with concepts for videos? Because you had an interesting concept for I wasn't into you anyway. <laughs> what is what is the process for that? Actually, it's a lot. Uh, my partner Billy, he he's really good at that stuff. He is he's really creative, and mm-hmm. we often sit down and just kind of talk about you know, oh, this would be cool. Oh, that'd be cool if we did that. It would be, wouldn't it be cool if we could do this? And he he actually came up with the idea of why don't you put yourself through pain? Because I mean, the song is about you know you have a crush on someone and they don't have a crush on you back. Classic mm-hmm. classic concept. 
mm-hmm. which is involves a lot of like emotional like ouch like being butt hurt and how how can you be butt hurt in real life and in, in in a physical way <laughs> and we were thinking you know you could you could just film the whole thing just rolling down a hill and just getting like absolutely wrecked by the branches and grass <laughs> where you could you could film yourself eating a ghost pepper and like <laughs> and i was like <gasps> that is it yeah. ghost pepper and then i think uh, from there i came up with drinking all the drinking all the milk afterwards as a kind of climactic <laughs> relief and then i did a lot of the like the costume and the set design and stuff and but again with this new music video it was just us sitting around and talking what could it be what could it be and he said i think he said something about um why don't you film it falling like can you just do the whole thing like falling from somewhere like a diving board and from there i don't we didn't do much falling footage because we kind of couldn't <laughs> And also that would be terrifying <laughs> falling from a huge, like one of those big 10 meter diving boards. But it, it ended up that kind of like swimming pool concept came out of that. And then I, and then I kind of like sculpted it out of that. So he's really the ideas, man. He's the brains of the operation. And then I, I kind of refine it and go, okay, well, I think this would look cool and this would look cool. And then I pick out the costumes and the set and stuff. Good collaborative partnership. Absolutely. Awesome. I've never been a part of a music video. I've done commercials and, and other ah. productions. I, I imagine the days of being able to be in a music video are somewhat behind me. I feel like they want people who are like fresh out of college, like <laughs> super young to be a star <laughs> in some music video. But I never got the chance, really, uh, to be in one anyway. On what level do you mean being the being in the music video or producing the music video, like actually facilitating it and making being it? Being in it, being uh, an actor oh, yeah. to get cast in it. I would love that. Oh well, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's. It's specifically young people because I mean we all we all need roles to play. Like you know, in acting, I feel like there's just so many different scenarios you can come up with that doesn't require someone like under 20 true true. i'm uh, not even under 20 <laughs> that's true I, I get that but you're the artist yeah. you get to you get to be in it uh, i'm not i'm not yeah. young and sexy for music <laughs> <laughs> well hey now hang on a second <laughs> you need to be of all the things that you need to be manifesting today i think we okay. should manifest for you to be in a music video okay okay and also young and sexy i'm gonna manifest <laughs> yeah i think you could do that that's totally I'm possible it. i'm gonna do it uh you know if <laughs> i live to 100 i am young uh <laughs> that's right and, that and you've done well for yourself <laughs> and someone will need someone will need a an old person for their music video they'll say i need someone who's at least 100 <laughs> and you'll be the only guy alive left to do it <laughs> fun well I think we've reached the end of this delightful chat. Cool. Can, can we create something together? Yeah, what are you thinking? I'm thinking maybe a music video idea. Maybe, let's see. What's something that you have learned or could learn that we could talk about how to like make something with uh, one of those skills that you were talking about learning? Uh, well, I'd like to learn to be the videographer. So oh. we'll make sure that you're in front of the camera. Okay. And I can learn how to uh, get all the right film angles, get a bit of art direction photography going. Oh, cool. That could be fun. That could be fun. Let's do something like that. Now, I don't know what so- Let's say, should we pick a song you already have? Because I guess the idea when you when you're coming up with, an idea for a music video or if you are even if you're the videographer trying to come up with ideas for the images i guess you have to think of a theme first is that how it goes yeah just something interesting that could happen okay your song lover that we mentioned earlier has uh Mm -hmm. 3.5 million listens on spotify which is great lover i can't see you dreams anymore nobody waiting for me in the door not you no more lover i can't see you in my mind 
what is what is the theme of that song? That song, oh, it's so long ago. It's been so many years since I wrote that. The theme of that was, I think it was just a uh, when, when you're. I had a, a boyfriend at the time, and we were kind of going through this really long and tedious breakup. Mm-hmm. And it was like we had really broken up, but we were still, you know, kind of together. And it was, I think, it was a, like a little a little light bulb moment of actually going, oh, we're not meant to be together forever. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. All right. I get it now. So it was like, I guess the song is coming to terms with that. Mm. Um, like trying not to visualize this person in your future anymore. Like, yeah. What are the lyrics again? I can't remember. Um, <laughs> well, oh, yeah, it's just a lover. I don't see you in my dreams anymore. Oh, Nobody yeah, waiting so- for me at the door. Yeah, that's very it. interesting imagery right there. So I guess the the music video could be moments where a person's envisioning their future, and it flashes like you know it's the boyfriend's there, but then he disappears, mm-hmm. and then it's just mm-hmm. you enjoying your life in those moments yeah. in the future. So that could be a wedding, could be one, but also like I guess vacationing. Yeah, I think I was, it's more like the everyday stuff when you're when you're at home, just doing doing things that you you'd expect to do someone with a significant other, mm-hmm. and then just yeah, just like them kind of disappearing, and then we you've got to come up with the 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 like the creative the weird part. There's something that's not quite not quite right to make it you know like the, the eating hot chili stuff the the, the part that right. makes it weird and interesting <laughs> so you've maybe got to put a like, twist on it would it be interesting i mean maybe like playing chess alone or, or a board game alone isn't really an interesting image enough or maybe it is if you have two people on screen and then one of them just disappears and one stays on screen. yeah Actually. How would you how would you make them disappear? Would you would you literally just fade them away in post editing, or would you would they die, or would they like like freeze? <laughs> I was thinking techniques in post of like either making them dissolve, or it could be just like a quick cutaway, and then suddenly they're not there, and like you would not act any different, mm. even though you're alone in the shot now Mm -hmm. like you wouldn't Mm -hmm. you would just be enjoying whatever it was you were doing you're just doing it alone Mm. but what are some things that almost need two people yeah (laughs) um, (laughs) like if you're on a seesaw alone yeah (laughs) yeah that could be cool because if the person disappears and the seesaw keeps going up and down it'd be like what the fuck (laughs) 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 that would be interesting i'd watch Mm -hmm. that Mhm. Mhm. And <laughs> what are some other uh, ideas of things that you kind of have to have a second? But maybe a tandem bike. You're riding a tandem bike, <laughs> and then suddenly yep. you're just riding that tandem bike alone. Yeah. Yeah. What else? The seesaw one was great. What What else? Like, just directly requires two people. It's so hard to think of. I keep thinking of things like paddle, those paddle boats where they have two people paddling. Oh, uh, yeah. If you don't, you just go around in circles. <laughs> <laughs> that could be funny. That could be that. cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. That's good. I don't know if that'll send the right message, but. I also thought maybe for uh, for Lover, because it's such a slow burn, like down tempo kind of thing, it'd be kind of cool for the whole video just to be like, someone doing dance someone doing like a kind of weird like just kind of in the moment not not interpretive dance but like just someone who doesn't know how to dance just getting really into it oh that would be interesting like getting what lost if, in the emotion yeah would it be choreographed have you ever seen, at all no okay. have you ever seen uh the music video for uh, the Black Keys, Lonely Boy. The Lonely I haven't seen Boy. That one, no. It's a funny. There's a funny story behind it. They they had this whole music video idea, and they wanted some um, people to dance. And they they were holding auditions. I think this is true. This might be a total rumor, but one guy showed up and was kind of dancing for them. And they went, "Oh my god, that's the whole video, <laughs> right there. This guy's this guy's it." So all they did was just set up one single shot and had this one man dancing in a like a 
I don't know, uh, he, he was like a had a postman uniform on, like a USPS uh, okay. delivery guy, and he was just dancing. Not, he was obviously not like a trained dancer. He was just doing whatever felt right, and it just looked great. And it's that's the whole like three minute thirty song. It's just him in this one frame, and it's so engaging. <laughs> yeah, I like that idea because maybe it could start out with it. It either could start out with both people dancing for Lover, or the whole time it's one person dancing but they're almost dancing like somebody else is there but they're I, no like they're tangoing there. and stuff <laughs> right right <laughs> put someone in like a put someone in a green screen um suit and do all the jumps <laughs> and like lifts and stuff and then <laughs> remove them in post that'd be cool yes yeah that's a great idea i love it there it is there we go we've got it conceptually done <laughs> well emily thank you so much for coming back on the podcast yeah, no, thank you so much for having me. It's been great. How been about we great. check in another another four years? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it's not another four years before she joins us. <laughs> you can check out what she's got going on. She's got music on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, and Tidal. And you can also check out her stuff on YouTube at Emily C. Browning. But we have a link to her YouTube page in the description. Also, her songs, the collective that she was in, we have a link to that YouTube page. Check her out on Facebook and Instagram at emily.c.browning and on Twitter at emilyc underscore browning. And we have handles for her songs in the description as well. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at There It Is Pod and go to thereitispod.com for more info. Until next time, be good to each other. The music for the theme song was created by Neil Brooks. The rap was written and performed by Nick Acevedo. The logo for There It Is was created by Jeff Prater. The There It Is podcast is produced by Jason Farr. (laughs) 